everybody and welcome back to the Sideline Eye podcast. We're looking back at the Armagh and Mayo game that finished all square, 17 points apiece on Sunday afternoon. I'm joined by Aaron Kiernan and we're going to look back at all the ins and outs of the game. Aaron, it was a mental game or a mental finish anyway, a really hectic second half. Armagh coming back from the dead really, five points down to land the last five points. It was it was some comeback from Armagh. It was, yeah. Um, I suppose you'd be finishing with the positive um, to score five points in a row. Um, whenever again, if we're being brutally honest, at um, at seventeen twelve and four minutes of normal time left, you you would have found it hard to see how we could have turned it around. But uh, they did. Um, and I suppose unlike the Galway game where it was a couple of goals this time, like five points, there's there's really an off in that. Granted, some of them were frees, um, but you have to be in the right positions, the right area of the field. Uh, to I suppose put them under enough pressure that you, you get the opportunities for your free. So that was very very pleasing. Um, I think it gave everyone in the ground, you know, that bit of a buzz and excitement. Like the last ten minutes, um, I was behind the top goals for the vast majority, running after a couple of kids, and we moved down to the bottom, um, towards the end of it, and I was just standing back, and you're sort of taking in the whole stadium, like. And to see it absolutely packed and the noise and the excitement and you're you're just thinking to yourself like this is the first week in February. Um, you know, it was amazing to see. Um and then to hear uh Kevin McStay and Ryan O'Donoghue and their comments on how much they enjoyed the athletic grounds and what they felt it was as a stadium. Um I think it just sort of reinforces everyone that we know in terms of whenever there's a big crowd there, um, there's nowhere like it. So yeah, fr- from that perspective, um hugely positive to I picked up a point whenever it looked like there was nothing on show for us. Um, it's definitely very pleasing. You're sitting with three points second in the table in Division One. Um, I think we all would have taken that after, um, you know, before the league started. Um, so it's uh, overall probably plenty to work on. Um, areas that um definitely need tweaked or changed. Um, but yeah, with. Uh, four minutes to go of normal time yesterday. Uh, we're grateful that you're now sitting with three points on the board. Yeah, the place was the place was rocking. Like it was such a it was a great atmosphere all day. But that last ten minutes was just unbelievable. And I suppose Rain's point, Arne, he's the ultimate clutch player for Armagh. Like it was a he bought the free brilliantly. Um, I think there was a few Mayo um people giving off on Twitter. Like the the couple before that wore frees. There was fouls on Aiden Falker. And I think it was Charlie O'Burns was the other one, but Rian, he he definitely bought his, but he was the man he stood up, like there was never any doubt he was gonna slot that over. No, no, didn't have any fear whatsoever. Um it's bread and butter for him. Uh he I actually had missed one nearly straight in front of the goals at the edge of the day earlier in the half, which is isn't like him at all. Um I don't know, maybe he was he probably just never took his normal time over it. But uh I've seen plenty of people saying that he bought it, and uh, I never seen him go down too easy too often. I'd say it was slightly clumsy um, from Conor McStay. Uh, it, you, might, you might think it was soft enough, but um, we'll take it. Um, but even for him at that stage, it was maybe going on 77 minutes in the game, particularly for the 20 minutes previous to that. Like, obviously, he was hitting free, he got on a lot more ball, driving with a lot more pace, even some of the turnovers he had forced. So, you could see even watching the back last night, he was he was blowing heavy at that stage. But um, ach, he's he, he's done that thousands of times in his life. Um, he knows his routine. He's head down, striking through it, um, caught it cleanly. Uh, and yeah, no, like I said, it was for me. It was never in doubt. As soon as the referee uh, put his hand up, it was a draw game as far as I was concerned. And the one he missed on the the very first free. Was I actually missed that I was writing down that he had scored it like it was a an easy one. I'm going by the behind the net camera. It definitely looks like it was over the bar. Now I don't know who made the call if it was the referee or it was the umpires, but it certainly looked. I suppose you were at the other end. I don't know what sort of view you had of it. Uh, I didn't have a good view of that one in the first half. And um, like I said, I was directly behind the goals and the and the top terrace, and it was the one at the start of the second half. Sorry, I was speaking about. Uh, I had, a, I had an eight-year-old sitting in a rail and, and I was waiting on the ball to come dropping down the top of his head because we were behind the goals and unfortunately it went 10 yards to the left but that was the one I, I meant that it just it, it wasn't like him he maybe didn't take uh, the same time over it um, but 
No, later on, um, like I said, he, he had a couple of vital ones, even Rory moving the one that was right in the corner quick to Turbo and, and he slotted it over. That, uh, I think that Eaton's sort of up in the tempo at that stage, um, Ethan coming, catching the, the great kick out underneath the shed side. I think just one thing led to another. The support then got involved in it. I think Mayo then obviously started to panic and we got the turnover where uh, Reap, the goalkeeper, tried a quick fist off his left hand um, and we and we nipped in, got a turnover. Caleb got a super turnover and Aidan O'Shea another time the ball was coming out. Um, so I think in that last 10 minutes, you know, the urgency and the tempo that Arma played at, um, it suited them perfectly. It pressurised Mayo, it got the crowd involved. And I think adding all of that together, it, it just gave us an epic 10 minutes that, you know, everyone was able to, to sort of sit back, enjoy and get involved and really. And Arne, I put out a message last night just for anybody sending a message what they want us to talk about. And the big message coming back to me was the kickouts, both from Armagh's kickouts and the Mayo kickouts. So I suppose we'll start on the Mayo kickouts when they were five points down. Armagh really pushed up on them, and you referenced Ethan Raverty catch, like he was coming out to win kickouts. Um, like Armagh really pushed up in that last ten minutes. But I suppose what was that the main change? Did you feel? And then once you start getting scores off that, the crowd gets behind you, the momentum's behind you. It was that the main change for Armagh in that last ten minutes that got them back into the game. It was, and, and that's where it turns. I suppose you have to look at that as a positive, that they're able to do that. Um, for me, I would be looking at it another way as well, is why did we leave it till it was that stage? Or was that a call? Or, you know, it's it's very hard to know whenever you're not involved in a group in terms of what is it left to the players on the day. I don't know how much information management could feed on just in, in open play it is difficult um to switch what you're doing or switch mindset so it, it did that's what it felt like to me like I said you could see everybody starting to press higher up the field um to go more zonal but Penn and Mayo in were earlier on we just seemed happy to to allow them to go short for us to drift to the 45 and begin defending from them um but they get spoken to the off air I, I noticed that at the time and I went back to look at it but the equalizing point that Matthew Ruan gets it's from a kickout that goes uncontested. Um, and like I said, at the game yesterday, I just knew they drew level and I just said, I just felt like that was way too easy. And looking back last night, from the keeper kicking it out, they fisted 11 times, they only kick it once and they go from a kickout straight down the throat of us, right onto the penalty spot and Ryan taps the ball over the bar and we only make contact with them once, literally touched them once, you know, so management wouldn't be happy with that, I would assume. You know, what you're trying to do is shortening the field, giving them possession, you know, but then put them in the areas they don't want to be where we can swarm them, get physical contact and then break. Um, but for whatever reason, it was for about a 20 minute spell, they got huge joy out of them getting possession, taking it at to, to the wings and then the pace and the numbers that they were breaking at. Um, I just felt at that stage we found them very, very hard to to stop and very hard to control. Um, but it is only the league, you know. You have loads of time to learn for when whenever the business end comes around for a championship. So that was the one thing I always loved about playing league football was if you make a mistake, it gives you time to work on things, to tweak things. Um, and we can see by the last ten minutes that if we do switch how we set up that we can then get rewards from it. But it was just, that felt like it ran on too long. It ran on for 20, 25 minutes where we just couldn't seem to get the grips with them whatsoever. And it just felt like most of what they were doing in terms of getting their kickouts off, that they were putting us on the huge danger. And then they said, on the flip side of that, by us giving them the ball and allowing the gear and practically getting to air 45 without any contact. So, I know myself as a defender, you're coming out and you're not getting contact. You just keep going. Do you know, there's nothing stopping your momentum. There's nothing. Your legs are never feeling heavy because you're not getting constantly hit or slowed up. Whereas you flip it round and you ask air defenders for that 25 minute period, how they felt. They were getting hammered for air kickers. They were getting hammered for break balls. They were getting hammered as soon as they got possession. And we weren't even outside air 45. Do you know, so couple the two things, the press they were putting on us and then us not. Um, putting them under huge pressure from their kickouts, I think that's what 
we just struggled for that period and just felt like we couldn't get the grips with the game at all because we were under so much pressure um, on both ends of the field, really. I think that, that physicality, Aaron, like you're, you're, I'm sure there's a lot of RMA boys sore this morning, particularly Supi Campbell. I think he got, he was tortured. He got a, every time he got the ball, he got a big hit, it seemed. But um, that, that physicality, me and Billy Joe Padden on last week's show had spoke about that. Like we knew that Mayo had huge men in round the middle of the likes of Ruan, the likes of um, Flynn. Obviously, he had no shake he can drift in and out. So, Arma, were, did Arma set off the kick out to prevent Mayo going long to these big players and try to get set up defensively? Because I know there was from the Masters coming in, there was a lot of frustration about the, setting off for so long and letting Mayo have the ball and letting them build up their attack. But was it to avoid them big midfield clashes that you know Mayo maybe had the edge in? Yeah, it, it quite possibly could have been. And obviously, uh, we just lost Stephen Sheridan uh, late in the week. Um, he picked up a niggle as well. Uh, so it you're already down Ben Creeley around the middle of the field um, who you obviously was a, your starting midfielder last year Neil Grimley's who come back so yeah th- there's probably we're stretched uh, around that area at the moment so management have to try and work accordingly for that um, but on the flip side they say whenever you really go after something like we did for the last 10 minutes uh, we were capable of putting them under pressure put doubts in their goalkeeper um, like the, the defenders weren't breaking the tackles and weren't getting into open space um, the same later on because there was just so much physicality being put on them um, and like I said you asked Supi how he feels this morning you know he's bloody sore um, because there was just so much physical contact put on him in all areas of the field uh, so that's Division 1 football that's the elite level that's where you have to get to uh, and like I said for 10 minutes particularly later on whenever it looked like it was lost so plenty of Mayo boys were sore then. And, you know, we started to force the turnovers. Like I said, with the fist pass from Reek off his left hand towards the stand side, we nip in and intercept it. Caleb Comiskey nipping in just before that. They had no shea to intercept it. That's because you're going after them. That's intensity. That's hunger and desire. Um, and that's how you that's how you put doubts in opponents. You know, if you're standing off them, everyone at that level is good enough and comfortable enough whenever you're no pressure putting them. But to frazzle someone, to to make them second think, uh, to second guess what they're going to do, you have to be up at them and in their face. Um, and like I said, it wasn't really until the last 10 minutes that it, it felt like that was Armagh really hunting and chasing them down. And we got huge reward out of it. Um, you know, we're even, we haven't even spoken about, you know, it, the, uh, the turnover that we got ends up when Groves into 45 hits an unbelievable pass into Andrew and and Hessian to be honest with you, he doesn't even know what he's doing the ball just hits him and it goes wide but that came from from us forcing turnovers to them and then Groove like Mernon was screaming for that before the ball was even in Groove's hands and he he doesn't even think twice outside of the boot unbelievable pass in Andrew's on the half turn and get the shot off another day that goes into the back of the net but again that's going after a team that's not sitting thinking can we, you know, draw another free here or can we work it in to get a simple point scoring opportunity? That was going for the win at that stage, you know. So like that's that's class. That's brilliant to see. That's that's what that's what this always excites everybody. Um that there was no caution at that stage. There was no like, can we just get a draw here? It was can we get the win? That was the mindset. Um so for me again, that's that's what you love to see. Um and it was a um, it was it was another aspect of when we're at our strength, if we're front foot and really going after a team, I think that's whenever we're at our best. Um, people say mirror a bit like that, they're chaotic. Um, and then obviously what they did in the last 10 minutes themselves, they'll have a lot of regrets, a lot of stuff that they can work on. Um, but for the vast majority, they do go after you um, and they do try to pen you into your own half and put pressure on you because they know once they get the turnover, only 45 minutes, 45 metres to try and work a score um, where they don't want to have to be going from one end of the field to the other because as 70 minutes go on at that level of football it's tiring it's tough work um, so if you can get the turnover as quickly and early as possible obviously without being stupid in terms of what you're you're doing defensively um, definitely that, that's the way I love to see Armagh going after Going after it Arne it, it has its um, bad size as well I suppose with Ethan coming up yesterday there was a turnover Arma down a point, they're they're chasing everything, they're pushing up. 
the ball's worked up to I think Killian O'Connor gets it, gives it to Owen McLaughlin. He's facing in an open goal and he kicks it wide and there's just a, a huge sigh of relief. And that's just we'll probably speak about Ethan Rafferty's sweeper keeper role every podcast, it seems, but that's the the downside of it, maybe. He's he's pushing up Armaz chasing. You love to see him coming up. He created a I think it was a turbo point in the first half. Done really well to do it, but that's Arma oh, were lucky that it, it failed to McLaughlin and he, he put it wide. Uh, yeah, that one again, that was never Arma were really going for it at that stage. I thought Rain could have took on the first shot. He passes then to Ethan, who's cutting back in the left, and it, it ends up it, it getting intercepted. Um, but at that stage, anything could have happened, you know, it was just it was crazy. Um, there didn't seem any rain the reason to what was happening and both ends of the field. So yeah, we could have been punished. And another day you could be and it, it puts the game to bed. Um, but just there was so much of what Ethan was doing and the pace he was breaking out and the high balls he was dealing at coming yeah. into the square, um, coming out for that kick out. Uh, like you said, there was there's huge positives to what he does. Um he, he he's I wouldn't even call him a shooter. It's just that's an outfield player just letting fly, uh, cutting loose. But there was that occasion, and I think there was another one where, I can't remember, I think it ends up a bit of a mix-up uh, in around the middle of the field where someone goes to to give a pop pass and maybe it was Groves and it goes uh, behind them and, and they pick it up and I think get a free and we just managed to slow the free up long enough to sort of regroup um, at the back. But um, I suppose in 70 minutes if you sit back and you look and you're going home and you're trying to individually analyze all the arm players to say who played well did Ethan play well did he have uh, a number of positive impacts absolutely um, some of the kickouts were, were excellent um, like I said particularly the high balls that were coming in on top from what Aidan O'Shea lurking in around them dealt with them all really well and um, a bit like the Galway game like him coming to catch the kickout um, laid on in front of the shed it reminded me a wee bit of the drive he was coming at laid on heading into the canal end against Galway where he was just making things happen and because he's not like your normal keeper coming out and looking nervous I think he makes the opposition nervous because of the pace it might as well be Supi that's coming running at you um, the way he's going like it's not the nervous goalkeeper you know not really sure about what he's doing he's so forceful and direct um, that Whenever he's in that mode and something comes off, it, it's infectious for the whole team. And I suppose just on the Armagh kickouts then, um, or in particularly that second half, like they were under huge pressure. Um, the I've done a few of the stats on the Armagh kickouts. So I think with 14 in the second half, a Mayo won five of them and got four scores off them, while Armagh won nine, got three shots off them, but they also got three that were turned over. So... I suppose there was just that period that even when Armagh did win a kick out, they would try to attack and it would be turned over a sloppy hand pass or something. It just it it really felt like, you know, Mayo were just turning the screw on Armagh. Nothing was going right for Armagh. They just couldn't get, you know, a point to settle the nerves or anything. And Mayo were just in full force in that whatever twenty minute period. Yeah, that happens. Um, you know, to use who you might have talked to, you go back, maybe look at the like to the Balabay game for ourselves this year, where you're you're playing up the hill, a team's pressing on you, and it was similar. You just weren't you weren't getting out, you were being punished at every opportunity. Um so it, it is, it's difficult. But again, I I'd be pragmatic enough to sit back and look and go, right, that went wrong. Um but it gives you something to work on. Like that's where management can sit there and and, and chat to the players like you know, could we have went quicker with our kickers? Could we have overloaded maybe more on one side? Um, how did we end up isolated? Where it, it seemed to me, particularly in front of the tunnel coming out of the main stand, it felt like there was maybe about five on two or four on one in Mayo's advantage every time whenever we were going long. So um, th- that that's an area that, that we can work on. But what happens there is I think a lot of, True kickouts now, where you have everyone's trying to move to give Ethan an option, but then if Ethan's going to go long, all your defenders moving is no good because you're leaving maybe a three or four on one around the middle of the field where the opposition, if we don't win it cleanly, they're coming steaming at us, and it's very hard to defensively communicate to pick up who's coming at you. Um, but it's like I said, it's something that can absolutely be worked on um, to get better, and and for me. I, um, that's definitely something that that we can learn, and because that's going to come again, you know. That's whether 
it comes in the league. Um, I, I'm not sure, but it's definitely going to come in championship as teams have a whole season to sit back and prepare and, and to go after Armagh. Um, or, it's the same with everyone. You, you're going to be sitting looking at strengths and weaknesses and uh, where you, you can get joy out of opponents. So if that does happen again, um, I think, they're given, I suppose it couldn't happen any better now. You have a two week break where you can sit there and analyze, particularly that period where, where we struggled and see what we could do differently um, in order to make sure that that doesn't happen again. Or if it does happen and a team is getting a press, what do we do to get one ball out, to get up the field and just draw a simple free and give us time to breed, give our defense time to breed, um, and then set up and try and counter against them and then try and see if we can win their kick out um, so I, I would say that's definitely something that will be clearly spoken about over the next two weeks to make sure that whenever that does happen again that we have an out um, depending on whether it's moving it quickly um, or whether we're going long and crash and breaks and overloading and we were talking about the goal chances are and missed the most important one was Jordan Flynn's goal chance that's cleared off the line by Callum Comiskey who it was great to see Callum back on the field for Armagh I think it's three years probably from he last played for him in 2020. So he, he gets back, he clears the ball off the line and if that goes in, it goes from five points to eight points and it's game over really if, if that's a goal. Yeah, it was. like It was vital and to be fair to Caelum, um, I know he had clearly been going well. He was named the start last week and picked up a, a knock on the ankle. Um, so yeah, it was, it was lovely to see him uh, getting back on. Obviously, playing one with the club and seeing how consistent he's been this past few years. Um, he's definitely at his level there at County. Um, so personally, from my own perspective, I'm delighted to see him there. But he read danger straight away there. Like he's right in the middle of the field. He can see what's happening, and he shows huge desire to make sure he gets back. He just makes contact with Flynn as he's about to shoot. Um, there's a bit of a ricochet where he nearly ends up scoring an own goal and he manages to clear it off his lane but for me it, it was the fact that he's seen danger um, so far out and didn't stop until he got back to make contact that was the most pleasing part and Arne I suppose heading into the break now um, there's a break and there's two games there's just Common and Kerry both two huge away games that are going to be hugely tough, obviously, as common top of the league and carry away is a not enough prospect, but a good weekend anyway for anybody heading down. Um, I suppose heading into the break, aren't we three points from a possible four, still unbeaten after two games, second in the league. Like you'd have talked about before um, the league started, like I'm sure everybody's happy that that's where our are and you still a huge chance to possibly get the league final um, later on in the season. Ah, it, it is. It's brilliant. Um, obviously heading down to play Monaghan and Blaney games against them have been tight for ten or fifteen years now, but still fully expected to pick up the two points. Um, so it, it did give the boys a bit of confidence heading into this weekend. But you knew you're always going to be up against it with Mayo. Um, we've seen what they have done for ten years and the level that they're capable of playing at. Um, so it was never going to be a gimme it was something I suppose that that's where the crowd turned out because it was so exciting to have them in the athletic grounds in a big division one game so uh, to be sitting where we are at the moment like it's it's obviously much better to be looking at points on the board instead of trying to plot forward down the lane thinking where you can pick them up um, like the, there's there's some areas that have been really pleasing um, I suppose for me yesterday if you look at the likes of the form of Connor Turbot, that was his first start in there yesterday for us this season. Obviously, having missed last week himself and Andrew, and um, what they kicked from play, like just so economical with them to come into them, and um, showing really well for the ball. Like, the more they get to play together, the more that they'll link up, um, and that they'll become a very potent partnership in there. So that was brilliant. And um, Supi's form again, and um, he might not get scores yesterday, but it's just the pace and the directness that he's running with that he's scaring the life of the teams, and he's so hard to handle. Um, definitely carried on last year's form as well. Um, so particularly those boys up front, um, they they have been really good so far. Um, and we have more boys that will start coming back from injury. They like said every county has injury problems. We can only deal with what we have ourselves. But um, we'll have a few more faces that will start to come in that will bolster the squad and um, give management more headaches. And the Roscommon game, I suppose you just have to look at their first two games uh, to when your rocket scientists to say it's probably not going to be the most exciting game in the world and um, they seem like they're playing 
quite defensive um, and, and are happy to do so and, and maybe hit you in the counter as well. Um, but it uh, it's it, like if you head over there and you, you manage to dog out uh, a two point another two points over there, you're sitting on five. Um, you're well set up for going to carry to to have a cut off them. Um, with not a whole point to lose, it's obviously a difficult place to go. And it's I'm not really sure. It gives them another three weeks. How stronger they'll be in terms of getting players back from injury or boys who have been involved in their club campaign. Um, but definitely it would be lovely to be heading down there. If you have five points on the board, you're you're well on your way to another good Division 1 season and I think everyone will have a good weekend down in Killarney. I think no matter what happens, people are going to have a good weekend, that week, um, Aaron. But just before I let you go, I suppose we talked about the kickouts and that, you know, what happened on Sunday. You're heading into the break now. It was maybe the perfect time for it to happen because that will be drilled into the players this week in training about the kickouts and um, both sides of the field, whether pushing up, sitting off, or how we win our kickouts if we're under pressure. But I suppose what, what else is there from the first two games, do you feel, that will be worked on now over the break? Or is it just take a step back, analyse everything and sort of get ready for us coming and carry and, and go again? Yeah, I, I think clearly like management have their own ideas of how they want to play so it gives you the chance now this week like I'd have no doubt even maybe today they might have a review where you just sit and go right we have two weeks over us there you know what's what's happening with how we want to play again are we happy with it um, it's just stuff that we can tweak and change um, and you do need to sit and look at you know what's going wrong because you can be certain that whoever you're coming up against um, you know they're going to be looking at how other teams are getting joy from us and go after that. Um, so that is an area then obviously where we need to address and get better at because th- that's that's just the way the way the world. Um, there be no management team in Division One who would be worth the salt if that's not what they were doing. You know, um, Davy Byrne is is a young manager. He's, he's done his time with Wicklow. Um, he's now moved over to Roscommon, so he, he's up in Division One, but. He's like they're two really good results for them so far. Um, so he's going to be sitting and analysing everything in terms of how we defend, how we attack, and seeing how they can exploit us. Um, so it, it'll be the same everywhere. Um, I, I don't think there's a huge pile in terms of, um, I suppose, movement-wise or whatever up front. Like if, you, if you look at Turbo and, and Andrew in particular, like we have mentioned, like the, they were they were really good yesterday. Um, you know, there's and there's so much more to come from them. And um, like I said, last twenty minutes, I only felt Ray and really started to come into it and started to get on the ball and started to drive. And um, so th- there's more in him. But as the weeks goes on, like your training block, like it's over. Your tough work's really done now. I would say what boys are using games now is for maybe topping up fitness as much as ever. Might do a wee bit of intense work maybe Thursday. Saturday, Sunday of next weekend, and then it's back into game mode, um, trying to work on everything on on the field, um, and and getting ready for us coming because that that's another huge game, um, because to be honest, with you, it's <clears throat> it's a winnable game, um, you know, you're not going over to us coming, you know, fearing what's going to happen, um, you're going over looking to to dictate terms to them uh, and, and get two points. Uh, and then, like I said, it, it sets you up perfectly for what is a tough run of games. Then maybe it could be three or four in a row um, before you get your next break. Um, so, it, uh, no, it is. It's very pleasing um, to be sitting with three points um, still undefeated in Division 1 um, and, and plenty of boys getting game time. Um, it's, it's as good as you could be asking for at the moment. Yeah, definitely. As I think most people would have took it um before the league started, and as we say, a big couple of weeks coming for Barmah. Um, and obviously the ladies, the hurlers, and the Kmogs will be starting soon as well, as well as the under twenties and the minors. So there's lots to be covering, and we'll be covering it all in the next few weeks. So keep an eye out on all our social media pages. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And of course, if you get your podcast on Spotify, follow us there on YouTube as well. So um, we'll be back in a couple of weeks' time. We'll be looking forward to that Ross Common game and we'll have an all special guest to preview it. Aaron, brilliant to hear your thoughts and thanks for joining us. No, I have to try. Thanks, million.